Hi there, my name is Gordon Farragher. I'm going to take you through a very simplistic guide and a highly simplified guide of the VAT consequences of buying and selling property, land and buildings. It is fair to say that this area is a minefield for VAT. This is not intended to give advice to anybody who is having a detailed transaction in this area. It's just trying to help people getting an understanding of what is going on. We start with a default position that if you supply land and buildings, freeholds or leases, then it will be an exempt supply for VAT. However, this being tax, there are always exceptions to a general rule. And the three main exceptions come in three schedules at the uh, back of the um, VAT Act. If you are supplying new commercial property, and new here means freehold under three years old, then that is a standard rated supply. If you are selling a residential building, a house to live in, that is a zero rated supply. But then you also get the situation where you are supplying a commercial building. It would normally be an exempt supply, but you can, if you want, to tax. They used to call it weaving the exemption. It's now properly called the option to tax. And that turns what would otherwise have been an exempt supply into a standard rated supply. Now, I know at first sight this often confuses people because people think, hang on a minute, you've got a standard position where you're not going to charge that. Why on earth would you want to make an election that meant that you were charging that? But in fact, in practice, people normally will make this election, and I'll try and explain why. With a little example. We have our VAT registered trader, X Limited, buying a new office block for two million quid. Now, they're buying the freehold, it's a new commercial building, so that means that it's a standard rated supply, so they will actually pay 2.4 million, of which 400,000 is VAT. So the big question, and this is the question that drives everything in VAT on land and buildings, can X Limited recover the £400,000 of import VAT? And the answer is, as it often is in taxes, it depends. It depends on a couple of things. Firstly, it depends on what they're going to do with the building. Are they going to use it in their trade or are they going to rent it out? That will be the second option that will eventually appear on my slide. Even if they're going to use it in their trade, we're still on the answer, it depends. It depends on the nature of X's trade. If X sells stuff that is wholly standard, zero, reduce rate, i.e. everything it sells is taxable, then the answer is a very nice, simple, yes, you can recover the £400,000 of input VAT. And this building has cost X Limited £2 million. Dead simple. If, on the other hand, X is an exempt supplier, like maybe it's an insurance company, well, it won't be VAT registered, if that's all it does. Uh, and the answer then is no, can't recover any of it. The building has actually cost £2.4 million. You could, though, uh, have a situation where X is a partially exempt supplier. And, well, the answer then is you can recover some of the input that depends on what proportion of the building is going to be used for taxable supplies uh, and what proportion for exempt supplies. That gets you into a little complication called the capital goods scheme, which I'm going to cover on a separate recording. The other possibility about X buying the building. Maybe it was never intending to use it itself. Maybe it was intending to rent it out. You've then got to ask, well, what type of supply is that? Well, usually, if you rent out a commercial building, it's an exempt supply. Now, you can possibly see the problem that comes up now. If you rent it out as an exempt supply, the import that is leading to an exempt supply and is therefore wholly irrecoverable. We're back to the position where this building has cost 2.4 million. So X Limited is going to be really tempted, if it possibly can, to opt to tax the rent. So whoever's renting the building will pay the rent plus 20% VAT. 
And the beauty from X's point of view about doing that is it's now an input leading to a fully taxable supply, so all of the 400,000 input VAT can be recovered. And that's why in practice, most businesses in this position will want to opt to tax the rent. Now, you do have to think about the position of the tenant, because obviously now they're paying more rent for the building, but if they're a taxable supplier, then they can recover the VAT. So it's not a problem to them. So it's only actually a problem where your tenant isn't VAT registered or is maybe a partially exempt supplier. A few sort of little bits on the option to tax. It does only relate to commercial buildings, nothing else. And I've already said that the impact of the election is it turns what would otherwise have been an exempt supply into a standard rated supply. You're going to notify revenue and customs within 30 days of the supply. And normally, if you make the election, it applies to an entire building. So you might have a multi-floor building, you rent it out. As soon as you decide you're going to charge VAT on one of the floor's rentals, then it applies to the whole building and you are then stuck with it. That now means that all supplies you make from or of this building will of supplies of the building will now all be standard rated. You do have a six month cooling off period, but after that, the option to tax is then binding on you for 20 years.